Calvary, praise the Lord God, praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Greetings, welcome to our teleconference another time. We are giving God thanks, we are giving God praise, we are giving God glory. Hallelujah. We want to remember Calvary because without Calvary, where would we be? We'd be nowhere. So give God thanks for his sacrifice for us and Calvary. And every now and again we want to remember Calvary. Calvary, Calvary, Calvary. Where would we be without Calvary? The place where he shed his blood for me. Praise the Lord. So, God bless you. Welcome to a teleconference. And we're going to continue and conclude with our last week of uh, prayer. The power of prayer. And um, we've been looking at prayer over the last few weeks and um, what prayer can do and um, we're just going to have a review of of what we have been talking about over the last few weeks and we spoke about um, how God, Genesis, how Abraham made intercessory prayer for Lot and for the people in Sodom and Gomorrah when God was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and um, Abraham made intercessory prayer for God to save the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. Praise the Lord. So our God is good and God heard the prayer of God heard the prayer of, uh, of Abraham and even though God could not find five righteous men, five righteous, ten righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah, God destroyed the city. God is a God of righteousness and we have to remember that God loves the righteous and God hates wicked. God do not hate wicked people, she just hates the acts of wickedness. Wherever there is wickedness, God is against wickedness. God is a righteous God, is a holy God. And so we see how God had to destroy the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. And even um, Abraham Abraham made intercessory prayer. But there was not ten righteous in the city. How sad. And then that was an intercessory prayer that um, Abraham made to God in regard to Sodom and Gomorrah. And then we look at Elijah after that how Elijah prayed and how God sent fire from heaven and consumed the sacrifice and how God how, how is Elijah killed all the prophets of Bela and also how he ran away from Jezebel because Jezebel sought to slay him and we saw how God made provision for Elijah how God provided 
raven to feed him when he was by the book and how Elijah triumphed and Elijah prayed that there would be no rain and there was no rain for three and a half years because of the prayer of because of the prayer of Elijah so prayer can do great things and after then Elijah prayed again and rain fell upon the earth so we as people of God have power with God when we call upon him when we cry unto him he is there to help he's there to deliver he's there to provide he's an all-seeing God is an all-loving God he's an omnipresent God he's present everywhere he's omniscience he sees everything he's omnipotent he's all-powerful all power belongs to God there's no power apart from the power of God God has got the ultimate power our Lord Jesus has got the ultimate power so we see power belong it unto God and um, <clears throat> then we looked into David um, prior of contrition there is also a prior of contrition that when we have transgressed against God we can pray a prayer of contrition we can ask God to have mercy upon us and God will have mercy because you know as our father pitied his son the Bible says so God pitied them that fear him and when we cry upon God the Bible also says that a humble and a contrite heart God will not despise he will not despise a humble and con contrite heart and we see what David did when David sinned against God with Bathsheba and with her husband she killed her husband he killed her husband in battle Uriah and he when he was told what he did because he did not realize that God knew and saw what he did but when he was told what he did he David humbled himself and in Psalm 51 he said Lord have mercy upon me according to thy loving kindness according to the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgressions so we have a prayer for contrition there's a prayer for every situation that we find ourselves in in this life there is a prayer a prayer when we pray we are actually connecting to the almighty God we are all actually tapping into the all-powerful God we are also asking God to come and take charge of the situation because every man that live it will come up against a situation that they have no control so often we do come up against situations which we have no control various situations come up against us we have no control and when we have no control over our situation that is the time when we pray we need to pray that is the time when we need to call upon God that is the time when we need to tap in to that almighty power and as long as we tap in with a humble heart sincerity which come from the heart God will hear God will come God will deliver because he is such a God and he's ever ready God is an ever ready God he's ever ready to hear us he's ever ready to deliver us he is ever ready to lift us up he's ever ready to promote us God wants his people to be happy God wants his people to be blessed and when we see how Jesus um, made the beauty to the fire the prayer um, when he said that blessed are they who humble and thirst after righteousness blessed are the pure in heart with beauty when he when he expressed how blessed we can be if we meet the condition 
the blessings is there and God wants to bless his people. But we call upon him with sincerity and he's there to bless and to do good because our God is a great loving God. So we look at how David prayed to God and God forgive him. God forgive him because he came to God in sincerity. So that was a prayer of contrition. Today I want, want us to look at um, a prayer of deliverance because as I said there's a prayer for every condition that we face. If we need to be delivered there is also a prayer that we must pray for us to get deliverance and sometimes we have to add something to the prayer. We have to add, sometimes we have to add something like fasting to the prayer. Sometimes when we fast, then the God hear us, not because of anything, but because we weaken the physical man. And when we, the Bible says, when the outer man perish, the inner man. So when we fast, we weaken the outer man, which is the flesh. And this, the inner man, which is the spirit, becomes stronger. This is why when we pray, and fast. This is the purpose of fasting to weaken the inner man because the Bible tells us that the flesh war it against the spirit. The carnal man is an enmity to God. So they can't, they, they don't come together, they cannot um, move together. They are in this, the, 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 the carnal mind is enmity to God. In other words, our fleshly mind is enmity to God. Enmity to God. It can't, because it cannot uh, comprehend the, altern, the Almighty God. It cannot comprehend eternity. It cannot comprehend um, timelessness. It can't comprehend a world without a beginning because everything about the carnal mind starts and finish. Everything starts and finish. We born, we live, we born, we live, we die. And everything about the carnal mind is start to finish. Everything about God is outside of start to finish. There is no start to finish in God. There's no beginning in God with God and there's no ending. So this is why there's conflict between the carnal mind and the inner man, which is a spiritual man. So we are living every day with a carnal we have a carnal mind, but we don't have to be carnal mind because our mind needs to be transferred, transformed into a spiritual mind. That means we should start thinking about earthly things and think about heavenly things. And that's how the Bible says we must be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So we, are, we have spiritual mind and we have carnal mind, physical mind. So we want to transfer our physical mind into a spiritual mind. So I'm going to look at the story of Esther. And the story of Esther began with two rivals. One was Mordecai and the other one was Haman. Haman was a Jew. Mordecai. Haman, the children of Israel were captive in Syria, in Assyria. And we had Mordecai and we had Haman who were a rival to each other. Haman was, was one of the king's top guard. Mordecai was one who was a Jew. And Mordecai was captive in that kingdom. And there was a time that Haman wanted Mordecai to show him respect, like some people wanted to respect them, but they don't deserve the respect. And Mordecai was not willing to do that. And so there Haman began to have a grudge and a hate for Mordecai, the Jew. And he made it, he wanted to make it possible, spend money to make it possible that all the Jews that was in that province should be destroyed. 
and Mordecai had a cousin which is Esther. Esther became queen even though she was a Jew she became queen because God wanted her. It doesn't matter where we come from God can lift us up and God lift up Esther to become queen of the province and the king Azariah as it were he was the king and she became the queen. She had she was there next to the king. God made her that way. God lifted her up from being a captive to become a queen. Just as you know, God can lift up anyone. So God lifts us up. But when Mordecai heard that Haman wanted to destroy destroy the the Jews, the Jews began to mourn and they began to put to wrap themselves in sackcloth. So I'm going to read this story and as I read this story you may follow where this story is leading to. I'm going to read from Esther Esther chapter 4 and it says when Mordecai perceived that all was done Mordecai went his clothes so, and put on, put on sackcloth and ashes and went in the midst of the city and cried with a loud and bitter cry. And even before Esther chapter 4, Esther chapter 4, I'm reading, I'm at verse 2. And came even before the king's gate, for none might enter the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, whithersoever the king commandment had a decree came there was great mourning among the Jews and fasting and weeping and wailing and many lay in sackcloth and ashes and Esther's maid had her and Esther maid and her chambermaids came and told her then the queen was the queen Esther was exceedingly grieved and she sent Raymond to Mordecai to take away his sackcloth but he received it not. Then called Esther for Hatash, one of the king's chambermaid, when he had appoint whom he had appointed to attend unto her, and he gave commandment to Mordecai and and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. And Hatash went forth to Mordecai into the sit street of the city, which is before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him and the sum of money that Haman had promised to pay the king's treasures for the Jews to be destroyed. Also he gave him a copy of writing of the decree that was given to Shushan to destroy them. To show it unto Esther and to clear it unto her and to change, charge her that she should not go unto the king to make supplication unto them and to make requests before him for the people. And Hatash came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. And again Esther spake unto Hatash and gave him commandment unto Mordecai and all the king's servant and all the king's province do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come before the king in the inner court who is not called there shall be one law to put him to death, except such as whom the king hold of the greatest golden sepulchre. So it was told Esther what it was told to Esther. Esther found out that her cousin Mordecai, Esther was a Jew, Mordecai was also a Jew. And you know the Jews those days are definitely black people. And all the 
Judah and all those people in those days, David, they were all black. I suppose you should know that by now. And um, so when Esther found out that her cousin Mordecai was dressed in sackcloth at the king's gate because he heard that Haman wanted to kill all the Jews and Esther heard the queen, so she sent his chambermaid, her chambermaid, to find out what it was and when it was told her that Mordecai, that Haman was wanted to kill all the Jews, she was grieved. Imagine that you hear that all your people would be killed. So, and it was told her that she could not enter to the, she could not go into the king. The law was she could not go into the king unless she summons. Even though she was a queen, she could not go into the king's chamber unless she is summoned to go in. And if anyone enter into the king's chamber without, without them being summoned, then the penalty was to die. So can you imagine if she wanted to talk to the king and it is an urgent matter, her people was about to destroy and she cannot go into the king's presence because the law was that no one could enter the king's presence. Can you imagine how she must have felt? She can't talk to the king and her people was about to destroy. So it says, um, oh, and if she does, she would be put to death. But I, but it says, um, and they told Mordecai Esther's words. And when Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Mordecai commanded, that's her cousin, Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not. So think not that thou shalt escape. So he's saying to Esther the queen, Think not that you will escape, that all the Jews will die and you will not. You, will, you are a Jew. Think not that thou shalt escape the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace, then shall there enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place but thou and your father's house shall be destroyed and who knoweth whether thou art come into the kingdom at such a time as this so Mordecai is saying think not that you are more safer than the rest of the Jews you are all, we are all in we are all in this together basically we are all in this together if the Jews perish you will perish also and then he went on to say, think not, and know, who know, who knoweth, whether thou art come into the kingdom at such a time as this. So who know if you became queen for a time as this when you are needed, when somebody is needed to approach the king, and only the queen can do that. No one else can approach the king. So who knows if, you, if God made you, to become queen of Shushan for such a time as this. So sometimes we are in a position we don't know what caused it, but God has got a plan, and God has got had a plan for the Jews, and that's why He exalted Esther to be queen of the Shushan. And Esther, verse fifteen, Esther four, verse fifteen, and Esther bade them return this answer go gather together all the Jews are present in Chushan and fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink three days night or day and I also I and my maiden will fast likewise and so will I go into the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that, the, that Esther had commanded. So Esther's made a commitment when she realized that all the Jews was, would be destroyed. 
she made a commitment she said go gather all the Jews bring all the Jews together together in Shushan and fast fast ye with me not eat or drink three days night or day and I will and my maiden will fast also and so will I come into the king which is not according to law if I perish I perish now Esther emphasized fasting didn't mention prayer but the reason we fast is to connect with God there is no other reason a child of God fast but to connect to hear from God for God to see the children of Israel used to when they are when they when they are grieved they go down in sackcloth and, ha and ashes which is a sign of humility and God respect humility fasting is humi is humbling ourselves before God that's what fasting is humbling ourselves before God if we if we do that as they did in the old days we went to our clothes tear our clothes apart and put on sackcloth which is old clothes and cover our head with ashes it's a way of humility God accept that and that's what Esther said they should do fast unto God and you know neither eat day or night and I and my maidens will fast also and I will go before the king which is not according to the law because according to the law if she goes before the king before the time appointed and the king's maybe the king might be angry the king may not be in a good mood and the king decide not to stretch out the golden scepter then she would die and this is why she said if I perish I perish if I go before the king and the king do not stretch out that golden scepter then I will die and if I die I die if I perish I perish sometimes we have to reach a place and this is so important that as a child of God we have to make up our mind whether we what when we do what we have to do if we perish we perish we should not be afraid of doing what is right and perish you see even the the, the three Hebrew boys when they were told they would be cast into the midst of the fiery furnace they said in their heart if I perish I perish when Daniel was about to be cast into the lion's den he was saying in his heart I will pray if I perish I perish the the, the three Hebrew boys were saying I, we will not bow before that that uh, that golden um, statue that Nebuchadnezzar has placed we not we will not bow and if we perish we per this is it if we perish we perish and so God deliver them God deliver Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego from the fire the furnace when they were cast in the men that were cast the man that cast them in would perish but they did not perish and they went into the fire but did not feel the heat not a hair on their head was swinged they were saying if I perish I perish because they said I know we know that our God can deliver we know and this is the this is our sentiment as children of God we must say we know I know that whatever situation is God is the, the, the deliver but if I perish I perish Daniel said if I perish I perish but I'm going to pray to my God and he was cast in the lion's den and he was there and the lions was just there couldn't touch him the lion could not touch him I imagine those days that those lions was very hungry 
I think they have made those lions very hungry because they wanted the lions to devour whatever they throw in there. So I imagine those lions was very hungry. But even though they were very hungry, and when Daniel come in there, because God Almighty locked the lion's mouth, the God Almighty would prevent the lions from even opening his mouth. And he couldn't touch Daniel. So we see many times how God delivers people. And it never fails. So Esther said, I will go before the king. It's not according to the law. In other words, it's unlawful for me to just go before the king. But I'm going to go. And if I perish, I perish. But I've been fasting. I've been calling upon my God. And I know my God here and answer. And so I'm going to go. You know, it, it, it to, to serve God, it takes a lot of courage. That's why we should never be discouraged. Never be discouraged. No matter what the circumstances that face us, we should never be discouraged. Never be discouraged. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther said, commanded him. So he did according to what Esther commanded him. And so... We see now in, in we see now in um, Esther chapter seven, we see how God turned the tide. I'm saying any time, whatever condition it is, whatever condition it is, God knows how to turn the tide. So, God. Um, Haman wanted to kill all the Jews but we, you will see in this chapter how everything turned around because it's not good for us to imagine evil and think evil of people and they said if you're digging a hole for someone dig one for yourself because you never know you may be the one that fall in, have to go in that hole because unless we do things righteously in the sight of God we will end up just where we, we expect others to go. So I'm going to read um, Esther chapter 7 from verse 1 to 10. And it, says, it goes on to say, So the king, Esther chapter 7, verse 1 to 10. So the king and Haman came to a banquet. Okay, so they had a little party, so to speak, with Esther the queen. So the king and Haman, Haman was the wicked one. The one who wanted to kill all the Jews. So the king and Haman came to a banquet with the queen. And the king said unto Esther. On the second day of the banquet of the queen. Of the, the second day of the banquet of wine. What is thy petition queen Esther? It shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? And it shall be performed even to the half of my kingdom. My God. Think about that. Think about the time when Esther was fearful to go before the king. Think about the time when she's saying, if I perish, I perish. Think about that time that the Jews feared, feared that they might all be destroyed. Think about the time when Esther think her family of her family will be destroyed. And all the Jews in Shushan will be destroyed. Think about that time. And look how God turned the tide. That the king, King Azariah, said to him, said to her, What is thy petition? What is it you want? It shall be granted unto thee even the what is thy request, it shall be performed even the half of my kingdom. Imagine that. That God turned that table. And brethren, God can turn the table for us at any time. Any time. We only have to call upon him. We only have to look to him. Then Esther, the queen, answered and said, if I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition. 
and my people at thy request. For we are sold, and I and my people to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. But it's a, if we had been sold for bad men and bad women, and I held my tongue, although the enemy would have countervailed the king's damage. So she's making a petition to the queen. And the king Azariah answered and said unto Esther the queen, Who is he? And where is he that doest presume this in, in his heart to do so? So Esther is telling the queen, I am not safe, my people are not safe, in those words. And king, the king wanted to know, who is he who put fear into you, Esther, and your people? And Esther said, the adversary, the en an enemy, is the wicked Haman. And then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. <laughs> so we see now that God, as Esther has exposed Haman for his wickedness, for the, because he had made a gallow, because he hated Mordecai so much that he actually made a gallow to, for Mordecai to be hang on. He wanted to see Mordecai dead. He wanted to stand and watch Mordecai. Mordecai didn't do anything to him. It's just that Mordecai was not showing him the respect that he thought he deserved. And so he made a gallow for Mordecai to be hang on. And Esther said, the adversary, the enemy, is the wicked Haman. Can you imagine how Haman must have felt when that word came to es when that word um, Esther came to the king and said, "The wicked Haman." And the Haman was afraid, so he was so big, he was so great, he was so powerful that he think that he could destroy the entire Jewish people. But when Esther spoke those words. The Bible says, the word tells us Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. He had to, he was broken down in just one word. That wicked, this wicked Haman. He thought he was so, you see, sometimes we must not exalt, people must not exalt themselves because you can exalt yourself to then tomorrow you can be a base. It's best to be humble. The way up is down and the way down is up. When we put ourselves up, there's only one place we can go that, that is down. But if we humble ourselves, then God will lift us up. So, going on to now, then the king arise. <laughs> Imagine the king get up. The king got up. He was, he was so upset. Now he got up. The king arise from the bank of wine with his wrath. Went into the gar palace garden and Haman stood up to make request for the queen his life request for his life to the queen Esther so he in other words now Haman that wicked man is begging now want to beg the queen for his life well it just shows us how God can turn the table that's what, the Bible, that's what this shows us, how God can turn the table. Esther was afraid of the plan of Haman to destroy all the Jews in Shushan. And they fasted and prayed to God. And God turned it around. No, Haman, this big bad man, is requesting Esther to spear him. He may have said, spear me, spear me. For he saw, he saw, Haman saw that there was evil determined against him by the king. My God. This is the power of prayer. We are concluding on the power of prayer. Brethren, we have power in prayer. In every situation, there is power. In every situation, we find ourselves in. God has the power, the ultimate power. Power belong unto God. And it says, Then the king returned unto the palace garden, to the place 
of the banqueted wine. And Haman has fallen on the bed where um, Esther was. So, so how it works out is that Haman, I don't know how he fell on the bed, but he was begging Esther to spare his life. And he must have fallen on the bed while he was making, begging, um, making petition to Esther. To, because he knew he was in trouble. He knew he was in serious trouble. So he must have fallen on the bed begging Esther, Esther, spare me, because the king wrath was against him. This is just to show us how God turned the table when we pray. How God can turn the table when we pray. Then the king said, then said the king, even he was in his wrath already, but now he find Haman on his bed, on the queen's bed, which is double wrath. Then said the king, will he force the queen also before me in this house? And the word of the king went out of the king's mouth. They covered Haman's face. That is it. That is the end of him. The word of the king's mouth. As the word of the king's mouth, they covered that maybe the gods and all those around covered his face. And said before the king said before the king, and Habona, one of the chambermaids, said on before the king, Behold also the gallows fifty cubits high. Oh my God, that must be very high, which Haman had made for Mordecai. Who has spoken good for the king? Stand it in the house of Haman. And the king said, Hang him. Hang him. Thereon. And they hang Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king wrath pacified. See how things work out when we trust God? He made the gallows to, to destroy Mordecai. And God turned it around. That that's, and he wanted to kill all the Jews. God turned it around that he was hanged on that same gallows that he prepared for Mordecai. Brethren, this concludes the power of prayer and we could perceive that from the stories that we've read that there is power in prayer there is power in prayer whatever the situation is there is power in prayer god turn it around god turn it around for mordecai god turn it around for the jews for esther and God deliver them. God deliver on time. Brethren, let us continue to trust in the Lord. Lean not on our own understanding. Our God is good. And I conclude this, this topic, which I have four episodes of Power of Prayer, starting from Abraham and Sodom and Gomorrah, going on to Elijah going on to David a prayer um, part one was the prayer of intercession where um, Abraham made intercession to God on behalf of Sodom and Gomorrah part two was Elijah how Elijah prayed and God answers prayer by fire part three was the prayer of contrition where David prayed to God to have mercy upon him because he sinned against God. And I conclude with prayer of deliverance where Esther made a prayer and fasting unto God and how God delivered him. So we can see, all oh my brethren, how much great power we have in prayer. May we continue to trust in the Lord and lean not on our own understanding. God bless you. We conclude here, Pastor Winston, Minister Kelsey, PT, and all those others are here. God bless you.
um, have a great and wonderful week and um, the grace of God be with you all. Pastor Winston, greetings sir. I welcome and greetings to you and greetings, Minister Cassie, sir. greetings to you. I hope you follow the story and I hope you enjoy the story. It's a wonderful thing how God can do. I would like to say a few words before we close. Pastor Winston, we'd love to hear you. Yes, sir. Greetings, Mr. Greetings. Greetings, sir. A greeting, First Lady. Greetings. She's seen to us. I guess we have a uh, guest here now, so she's looking now. Go ahead. God bless you. Okay. Yeah. I hope you have a wonderful time. Yes, we did, but, sir. We did. Thank you. Day. Yes, sir. I'm glad you enjoy yourself. You're back safely. Yes, God is good. And back on the platform. Yes, sir. And the word of God. I just love to listen when you talk. And you talk. You talk the word of God. And that's very yeah. good. Yes, and I don't understand when you talk. Yes, and you're blessing. Nice, nice. I just came on not too long ago. I was just came in front of church. I told my wife, she more. Let us join in. And yes, God bless yeah. you. Good to see you, Minister Kelsey. God bless you. Yeah, yeah. and um, we love you. We miss you. I'm going to continue listening to you. And you can preach God's word. God, God's word, you must listen. You must learn. I must go. And I want to go in God more and more each day. Amen. God, God bless you. And Sir Kelsey, you want to say something? Minister Kelsey. She there? Our mic is off. Okay, okay. Well, God bless him, Pastor. We miss you, and we're glad to be back. You know, yes. God is good. God is wonderful. I mean, it's it's just a blessing to you know just to get away for a little time. It's just a yes. bit of fresh air. It's a beautiful country. Portugal is a beautiful country. We really enjoy it. People are nice. Place is clean, and everyone is just nice. I really, well, it was really wonderful. I can't, can't say any fault. Everything went, went well, and we thank God for it. God is yeah. good. I give God praise yes. and give Him glory.